Hello, this is Avir from Digital of Things. I have with me today Sudip, the CEO and co-founder of Digital of Things, and I've got Radi, who is the Digital Marketing Director of Creative 971. We've got quite an interesting topic to, to discuss today. Uh, we know how e-commerce businesses are increasing and the need to do business more efficiently is, there's a demand for that and it's a must, I'd say. Um, would you be able to highlight or give us like five key takeaways of how to optimize conversions to help? Of course. So uh, first let me highlight that the user experience of the consumer on the website and the marketing do work hand in hand. So no matter what you do in a marketing uh, activity, it will be affected by your user experience uh, in the website. So one of the main issues and very, I have to stress on that, is the speed of the website. Mm -hmm. The little speed and um, how you're actually going through the website, that would actually affect the conversion. Because if you actually went to a website and it's like taking too much time to load or to buffer, or like between switching the page, it's actually buffering a lot or loading a lot, that would make you go away. No, you're not going to convert. I mean, yeah, people are now want everything to go so fast. So speed of website is very important. Uh, another thing is uh, website reliability, like the content itself, how you actually position your products, how you talk about your products, the description of your products, the readability of this, it needs to be clear, it needs to be visually uh, appealing mm -hmm. to the people to actually convert. Uh, another thing is, um, which takes us to how the, the appealing and clear call to actions. You have to have very clear call to action, like to buy now, to convert now, uh, subscribe right now. Uh -huh. These are the kind of um, messages that you need to be clear about. And also I have to stress on actually the colors of the call to action buttons actually help. Like orange, red and green buttons uh -huh. are more, um, people are more actually uh, the more to press on it and to click it, if it's actually orange, red, or green, than other colors. Uh, also, talking about that, we have to be color-wise on the website. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you need to have the colors of the website actually reflecting your product or service. So, let's talk if you're talking about health envi or environmental topics or uh, products, green would be a better suit rather than red, pink, or any other color. So, the more your website is uh, reflecting the color of its product and services, mm -hmm. that actually help us to convert. Um, definitely we need to have uh, around um, organize an easy website. Mm -hmm. uh, if your website is messy, imagine going to a home store and you find uh, bathroom towels next to bedroom setups. You're going to be confused, you're going to be irritated. So the more the website is uh, tidy and clean and straight to the point, you'll be able to convert more. And uh, of course one other thing you can have, uh, remove any uh, distractions on the website. Don't have too many offers, too many stuff on mm -hmm. the same thing, on the same page. Like, uh, I want to buy this, but uh, oh, there's another offer, another something else. Don't distract your consumers. Your user. Be straight to the point again. Mm -hmm. And of course there's some other techniques and stuff that you can add, like you can have um, time offers uh, to actually help people to hurry up with the purchase and uh, a lot of other kind of stuff that you can actually add. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's quite an overlap when it, like many of the things that you've discussed overlap with how UX design is being taken mm -hmm. into consideration. What do you think of that? Yeah, I agree uh, with most of your points actually. It's, uh, yeah. There's some good UX techniques in there. Um, but again, following on from what you said, I feel like uh, everyone now is a lot more impatient. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's things at their fingertips, people want things very quickly, um, and they don't have time. That's just the general culture uh, that we face nowadays, right? And they want that, what we call instant gratification. Um, so again, speed, all that thing uh, is very, very important. Um, what that also means, if people are less impatient, is that they're less forgiving for bad user experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and with so much competition sure. around, if you come across a website that is just frustrating to use, you just switch it off and use their competitor. And we see that a lot, right? Uh, so people are just less, less forgiving. You know, they're not gonna go through that whole process when they've got another competitor that they can just quickly go to that provides a better ex user experience. So how do you uh, provide a great user experience? Um, aside from all the things that you said here uh, with all the techniques, um, I would just uh, say the first things first is get the basics right. A lot of people forget that, right? And they, and they get hung up on you know, doing some cool things, some innovative things, but they don't realize that actually, if you get the basics right, uh, from a UX perspective, that solves a lot of problems. So let me give an example. Um, I used to work for a bank, 
um, and everyone had lots of ideas on how you can make banking amazing, right? Mm -hmm. But actually, if you look at the data, most of the people go there to make a payment. They log in, make a payment to someone or something, and then they leave, right? 90% of the time. Now, if you don't fix that process, right, you're, uh, you're actually um, causing issues and frustrations for 90% of people, mm -hmm. right? What most people do is focus on the other 10%, you know, the other cool stuff. So what I mean is, if you're doing an e-commerce app, right, make sure the checkout is amazing or signing up to an account. If you're um, uh, a holiday website, make sure you're inspiring people if that's your end goal. So whatever the basics is, get that bit mm -hmm. extremely right from a UX perspective. And then you can work on the others uh, and it'll have a massive impact, you know, as we go along. Um, a couple of other things is I would say, also look at the audiences as well and cater for your audience. What are they there to do? What are the demographics, right? Uh, and you'll be surprised at how UX changes for different demographics, whether it's nationality, whether it's gender, whether it's age, you know? Um, so if you're dealing with, let's say, the elder generation to the millennials, there are two different ways you can do UX, True. right? Um, and we just need to be careful of that. So I would say always research your users, find out who they are and find out what makes them tick. Uh, emotionally, uh, and then create the user experience based on that. If you know that the younger generation prefer, you know, nowadays the uh, the social media apps, and they're very used to scrolling or swiping, then you can, your UX can incorporate that. Where it's a, a different demographic, then you can uh, adjust it uh, accordingly. Um, obviously, there's various different principles and heuristics that we apply from a user experience point of view that makes the whole process easier. Uh, Randy, you touched on a few actually, uh, you know, with the color and the design, the information architecture, making it clean. So I agree with all of those uh, things. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, I'll just add that once you've got it right and you've got the basics right, um, then you can tweak and optimize. Once you start getting data, um, you can actually start uh, playing around with things to see what makes a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way I always give uh, an idea is it's like a, a radio, an old radio, a static radio with the dials. Right? You always hear crackling until you get all the dials in the right order and then you hear clear, crystal clear sound. That's what UX is like when you're t tweaking and optimizing. Right? It's a, um, find out what you can change and tweak uh, that has effects. And you've seen loads of examples of this where you, know, you change a slight color and it has millions of dollars in revenue uplift. You've seen stories like this all the time. Small, small things you can do to tweak and optimize. But after you get the basics right, let's get the basics right and then you can continuously optimize. That's, that's my tips from... But see, that's the thing, when you talk about conversion, conversion is actually like the end step. Yeah. Because you actually got the client, you did sure. everything, you told it the right money, you did all the effort. Mm -hmm. It's now the time to convert them. So mm -hmm. to convert them, you actually need to do all the basics that you just mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. And plus targeting the right audiences and having the, the right user experience mm -hmm. for them. So yeah. once you have the client on the website, that's how you can actually kind of convert them exactly. to the actual sales. Yeah. Exactly, and yeah. I think even the industry has a play there, like it depends on what the user is going to purchase or what they're looking for. Let's take an example of an airline ticket versus if they're going to shop from an e-commerce store. The value of the purchase even mm -hmm. makes an impact. For a person to go and decide, oh, I'm going to book this ticket and pay this amount, they're going to take a bit of a lengthier time. Mm -hmm. So what can we do from maybe a UX point or even it has different touch points, what can be done for us to facilitate this journey and to minimize the jumps between, from a point to another? Yeah, um, so there's uh, various uh, different things we can employ. Um, but I agree with you, you should look at what the user is wanting to do uh, and the purpose of it, right? So if I'm browsing something because I'm interested in a product, Right? I, would, I don't mind taking time to research everything and learn about it all before I make the decision. The, an example would be booking a holiday. Mm. I'm looking for hotels. I don't mind spending time looking at photos, videos and things like that. If I'm ordering food, I'm hungry, I need something very, very quickly and I don't want to waste time so I just order it quickly. Right? Yeah. Uh, airline, again, same thing. It's a big purchase. Mm. Uh, not just airline, but any kind of other high value items. You don't mind spending a bit longer. So it's just understanding the key user tasks and how much uh, you can actually um, uh, cause the user to dwell and read, right? And is that important or not? Um, I think that's really, really key. Uh, yeah, to of do. course. And actually, the dwell time on the website and the page, page views and all these kind of aspects, these, we're going to discuss it actually in the metrics, like mm -hmm. the, yeah. what kind of metrics that we're mm -hmm. actually going to be looking at. Exactly. And, yeah. uh, to track. Yeah. And we're tracking in the marketing uh, efforts. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Dwell yeah. time is that, very important. And I think uh, different metrics apply to different industries, right? right. So, um, you can't say, hey, I want to do an airline booking in, you know, 20 seconds. Because people don't mind spending that time trying to find the dates and the right seats and the right prices. 
So it just depends on the actual website, the goal, the users, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. If it does take long, there are ways you can um, uh, make the experience better for them. Uh, for example, what we do is sometimes we do um, things like progressive disclosure. So if there's a lot of information you want your customers to consume, you can show it in a linear way or in a slow way that mm -hmm. it kind of says, okay, you've read this bit, now read about this, now read about this, and you take them through that journey rather than just bombarding them with you know, every single uh, piece of information ever because they'll get confused. Uh, you can have things like steps and progress bars to say, hey, this is a five-step process, by the way. You know, get your credit card ready, get your passport ready, get everything ready. So you tell them beforehand what they need. You're kind of prepping them for that journey. Mm -hmm. And in that way, they don't mind spending that time going through that journey. So there's lots of different techniques you can apply, again, depending on what you want them to do. Question, depending on the industry as well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for this session. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to write for us. And we'll try our best to make sure that we get those questions answered. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.